Hello and welcome to i24 New Sports Daily Magazine with all the latest scores and stories from the world of sports. And there's so much action coming your way. Atletico Madrid just knocked out Real Madrid from the Spanish Cup. Can they do the same to Barcelona? All the big guns win today in Melbourne, but they had to struggle along the way. And with the Super Bowl just a week and a half away, preparations in Arizona are in full swing. All this and much more coming up. Let's get started. We begin in Spain, where the quarterfinals of the Copa del Rey begin tonight. Barcelona will host Atletico Madrid at the Camp Nou in the first leg. The team from Catalonia beat Atletico 3-1 in the league just a week and a half ago, so maybe they feel rather comfortable ahead of the match tonight. What do they do when they feel comfortable? Go back to basics, and basics these days means comparing Ronaldo and Messi. I've always said that he's the best player in history, and not only the current one, but of all time, since I remember. Of all the players I've seen, Leo Messi is definitely the best one. I've always said so, and I have no doubts. Cristiano Ronaldo is evidently a top player, a number one, but football-wise, I think he's behind Leo. And that's the man he recently asked to kick out of the team. On to their rivals, who may not have a Messi or Ronaldo in their squad, they're simply an outstanding team. They just proved that by knocking holders Real Madrid from the cup last week, but there is no time to celebrate for Atletico Madrid, as now Barcelona is waiting. Atletico hopes to get a good result tonight to keep the second le leg alive at the Vicente Calderon. And manager Diego Simeone knows that with all the firepower on the other side, it will be extremely difficult. We are facing the best Barcelona of recent times. They've changed the way they pressure, and I am impressed by their improvement after losing the ball. They're very determined in their recovery. They have many attacking players and react very fast after losing the ball, which leaves us with few chances. I cannot venture to predict the result because it will be a very tough 90 minutes, and I am aware that every minute on that pitch will count for the second leg. Two more matches will be held tonight in the Spanish Cup. Villarreal hosts Getafe and Athletic Bilbao makes a trip to Malaga. The first leg will be completed tomorrow when Espanyol faces Seville. The next leg will be held next week. The game tonight is obviously a big deal for Atletico Madrid, but there's something even bigger happening around the club. Chinese billionaire Wang Jianlin bought a 20% stake at the Spanish League champions. He is the first Chinese businessman to invest in a top European football club. Atletico Madrid fall way behind Barcelona and Real Madrid when it comes to money, as both powerhouses are supported by Persian Gulf giants. We will now see if the oil money can be matched by Chinese money. There was also action in England with the first leg of the League Cup semi-final, and it was a giant match at Anfield. Chelsea came to visit Liverpool and the Blues took the lead on 18 minutes with a penalty by Eden Hazard. Chelsea then moved back and allowed the mighty Reds to take control and it cost them dearly. Raheem Sterling gets the equalizer in the second half. The tie will be decided next week in Stamford Bridge. Jose Mourinho is already thinking of a potential final while Brendan Rodgers was very happy with his team's performance and more than all with Sterling. Um. I thought he was outstanding and his movement. He's got that great ability to run in behind, but he can also exploit the space in the front of the defender. And the system we play, and when we work the ball and move the ball, it opens up the centre of the field. And, and he's the perfect player to just come underneath, get turned, and then his, his speed was frightening, really. We are one victory away from be at Wembley. So I hope and I know that Chelsea fans would would like that. The last two League Cups that Chelsea played, both finals were at, at Cardiff. And uh, Wembley is different. The first leg of the other semi-final will be held tonight when third division side Sheffield United hosts Tottenham. Tennis now, and even though all the big names who played today made it to the third round of the Australian Open, this will not be a day the top seeds would like to remember. We begin with a women's tournament where world number two Maria Sharapova was not expected to face any trouble when she met fellow Russian Alexandra Panova, ranked only 150 in the world. The only problem was no one told Panova about it. After losing the first set, she played great tennis in the second, winning it 6-4. 
onto the third and deciding set where Panova had two match points on her serve. But Sharapova reacted. The winner from the backcourt put her back in the game and she never looked back. Sharapova trailed 5-3 but went on to win four successive games to put this match behind her. It was much harder than what she thought it would be, but Sharapova is through, winning 6-1, 4-6 and 7-5. And she knows that on days like this, when things don't go her way, all that matters is the fact she eventually got the win. As I say, you never know how you're going to feel until you go out onto the court and compete and play. No matter how you prepare, what you did, once you get out there, everything starts from scratch. And um, it, was, it was a tough day, but I pulled through. And I guess the, at this point, that's what matters. And um, certainly gives me a, a lot amount of confidence that I didn't play my best tennis and was able to come through. And sometimes that's, that's good. Next on center court was Roger Federer, and the men's number two did not have it easy either. He faced Italy's Simone Bolelli. The world number 48 took control of the first set, finishing it off with an ace to win 6-3. Federer took a medical timeout during the match to treat an injured finger. It helped him later in the game as he came back to take the next three sets. The Swiss, who hopes to win a Grand Slam this year after not winning any in 2014, wins the match 3-6, 6-3, 6-2, and 6-2. Then he told reporters he does not really know what is that injury thing he's suffering from. I knew there's nothing you can do because I didn't want to tape it up because then it would be even bigger and more weird. So I just said I hope it doesn't get worse or it doesn't stay like this. So it actually went away a bit. But now I feel it again. So I don't know what the deal is. Beasting, you're saying. I was thinking it could be that or... Yeah, I don't know, maybe I've got ideas what it could be. Well, no, you can't see anything. <laughs> but it is definitely swollen and it's funny, so I don't know what it is. I'll check. As long as it's not getting badly, you know, it's, it's okay. It was even harder for the number three, Rafael Nadal, who faced Team Shmizek. 109 places separate between the two in the ATP rankings, but the American made Nadal work very hard. It took the Spaniard four hours and 12 minutes to win the game in five sets and then bend on the floor completely out of energy. Nadal now has two days to rest before he faces Dudicela from Israel in the third round. The prize money paid to the winners at the Australian Open is now the highest for any tennis tournament. How did that happen? Look for the answers in the Persian Gulf. The United Arab Emirates saw how neighboring Qatar takes over every corner of global sports with their oil money, so they decided to do exactly the same. Their petrodollars pay for Real Madrid and Arsenal, and as Liz Barenbaum and Daniel Roth tell us, now they're also taking over the world of tennis. The UAE has continued its crusade to become a major player in world sports. The newest weapon, a seemingly bottomless chest that allows it to buy the biggest sports competitions. The Australian Open is the first Grand Slam of the new year and the players collect 28 million euro a prize which has doubled over the past 70 years. This is also thanks to a lucrative multi-year contract with the Emirates airline. The number one player in the world knows that the competition is very challenging and hopes to take this huge prize. 120 players want to prove that uh, they deserve to be in this tournament and they have, of course, huge motivation to win against the top players. So that's, that's something that's obviously uh, keeping us all cautious and we have to have a right and humble approach to the tournament. So I'll take it one match at a time. Year after year, the financial expansion of the four major tennis tournaments increases. In October 2014, the organizers of the Australian Open announced an increase of 3.3 million Australian dollars. And the contract with Dubai has allowed a growth of around 10%. There are now 40 million Australian dollars to be awarded the stars of the competition, a sum which has also grown since 2007. Since 2013, the top winners saw exponential gains. In 2013, the winners claimed 1,595,000 euro. Then in 2014, 1.74 million euro. And now in 2015, the men and women will net 2 million euro. This is another motivation for the athletes. Uh, it would be really great. I've been going for number six for a number of years now. Um, but it would be really special for me. I'll be really happy. And God, I would want it. I want it, I think, more than 
than anyone else here, but that doesn't mean I'm going to get it. So I have to fight hard to get it. Even losing in the first round will earn a player 23,700 euro, and this is not the only Australian tournament that will benefit from the Gulf state. The Emirates continues expanding in tennis. After Roland Garros in the U.S. Open, the airline also sponsors the Hopman Cup and tournaments in Brisbane, Sydney, and Adelaide in what is now called the Emirates Australian Open Series. Last year's Wimbledon winners Novak Djokovic and Petra Kvitova pocketed a whopping 2.14 million euros each. The U.S. Open also announced an upcoming increase in its payout. However, the poorest tournament is the Roland Garros, whose winners Rafael Nadal and Maria Sharapova received only 1.65 million euro. The Australian Open is gradually becoming one of the most attractive Grand Slams. Even at 45 degrees in the shade, players look to excel and capture the trophy. Time for the NBA now, where the San Antonio Spurs travel to Denver to face the Nuggets. The champions have been struggling so far this season. They're only seventh in the Western Conference. They had a tough stretch in December, but now things are finally changing. It's got to do with the fact that Kawhi Leonard and Tony Parker returned from injuries. Check out their numbers. Parker had 18 points and 7 assists. Next on the scoring list was Leonard with 17 points and 15 rebounds. The Nuggets were keeping it close. Aaron Aflalo even gave them the lead in the third quarter, but the Spurs were always in control. Tim Duncan had 16 for the Spurs, these two coming after the assist from Boris Diaw. San Antonio wins for the fourth straight game. Final score was 109-99, and you know that no one will want to face them come the playoffs. Super Bowl 49 is coming up, just 11 days left until the New England Patriots or the Seattle Seahawks take home the most prestigious prize in American football. The prize itself is already in the host city. The famous Vince Lombardi Trophy was placed at the Arizona Science Center in Phoenix. It's part of an, of an exhibition called Greedy and Glory, which displays a collection of various artifacts from Pro Football Hall of Fame. The exhibition opens this Saturday and will remain open during the whole Super Bowl week for the fans expected to flood Phoenix next week. We now take a look at the big winners of this week in sports. One is a motorsport hero, the other is a skiing legend, and the third just doesn't stop surprising us every time he steps on the football pitch. Here's Michael Friedman with our Stars of the Week. With a lot of excitement around the sports world this week, we witnessed three stellar athletes accomplish greatness. So who's your favorite athlete of the week? Lindsey Vaughn? Marcoma or Lionel Messi. Let's go. Let's go. American Alpine skier Lindsey Vaughn showed off her ability at the Cortina di Apezzo slopes as she set a new record in the Women's Alpine Skiing World Cup, winning her 63rd victory in the competition. The American first equaled the 35-year-old record set by Anne-Marie Proel and then showed off her speed in the next race as she glided down the mountain to surpass the Austrian. As she completed the race, she looked up to find out she made history. Afterwards, Vaughn had her golfer boyfriend, Tiger Woods, by her side to congratulate her. And what better way to celebrate than with a bottle of champagne and splashing it all around? The talented female athlete looks to have it all. And next, we move to the 37th Dakar Rally, which finished in Argentina. With 420 racers riding through South America in the categories of motorcycles, quads, cars, and trucks, only 216 made it to the finish line. Of the 79 motorbikes standing at the end, it would be the experienced Mark Coma to capture his fifth Dakar title. The Spanish driver had to overcome obstacles along the way and made repairs to his bike, but it wouldn't stop him from winning in Buenos Aires. Como was smiling as he lifted the 2015 Dakar Rally Trophy. And lastly, there's the almighty Lionel Messi. The remarkable striker led his Barca side to victory once again as he earned his 30th hat-trick for the club. Messi's first strike came in the 10th minute, applying a strong header to a precise delivery from Ivan Rakitic. Later in the first half, the team displayed great ball movement on the pitch and Luis Suarez assisted Messi as he scored inside the six, leaving the keeper helpless. The Argentine then completed the treble with a low shot into the far corner in the 62nd minute to cap off a perfect night. With celebrations around the team, it was another memorable match for the Barca hero. 
Each of these athletes were impressive in their own sport, whether it's the talented female skier Lindsey Vaughn, the speed rider Mark Coma, or hat-trick scoring Lionel Messi, you decide your favorite Athlete of the Week. When we think of cowboys and sports, usually rodeo is the first thing that comes to mind, but some of them apparently are not bad at skiing. Nearly 100 cowboys and cowgirls traded their bulls and bronx for some skis and snowboards for the traditional cowboy downhill event. There were several competitions, but as always, the highlight of the event was the stampede. Quite easy to see how it got the name. They're now heading back to the rodeo arenas, but it was fun, so don't be surprised to see all of them again on the slopes next winter. And that's it for us today. Don't forget, you can watch this and every other show on our website at i24news.tv. We're also on Facebook and on Twitter. Thank you for watching and have a beautiful day.